Sulgi. Where do I know Sulgi from? Red Velvet. Red Velvet. Red Velvet. Was that the Midsummer? The one that felt like Midsummer movie? Yes. Okay. Now we're on board. Oh, that's right. That, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Psycho, that's right. Okay. Sulgi, 28 reasons. 28 reasons. This is from a year ago. Damn, starting off strong. Whoa. I kiss your brother. Come on, mom, chop. Don't keep a job, don't want to kill my pleasure. Take a job, and check. Don't lean on no bit. Get on our bone and get chan, jammy so okay. Ooh, I'm breaking every rule. Take a man, get up, he go, she punga. the sound design in this i never thought i would say it like that do you hear this there's so much happening in the soundscape of these little sound effects that are put in oh my god see that did you see that is that the same girl has it been the same girl the whole time shut shut up oh my god it's so good this transition is disgusting! Oh my god, how did they do that? Scene A? Oh my god. Oh! Ow! Oh! 
The more you break, the more you'll want me. Good and evil people are not clearly distinguished. Good and evil coexist within one person. Even if one seems good, greed and temptation always exist together inside. We simply try to resist from being captivated by evil. Oh, it's a minor thing, but you know what I wish they would have done? Oh, there's so much I love about this. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it would have worked. Ah, mm. Oh, man, this ending shot. God, oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> oh, man. What? What? There were parts of this. Oh, I wanted to just rip it apart. Um, The sound design in the beginning that I was very subtly discussing. First of all, this whole soundscape in the beginning, it's like a friggin' movie. Yes, and what is so beautiful. And the first time I went, whoa, to this shot, it's probably not what you thought. We start off in a cinematic view. You see the letter boxes up here and down here. It's like a 235 by one, okay? Here, here. As we get into the scene and you hear the sounds and we start to break out, those letter boxes go away. In the same pace of us zooming into the dancers with this bass drone that goes and everything comes together. Scene A to scene B, letter boxes open, the bass comes in, damn. And she's looking right at us. She draws us in with these eyes and it just pulls us through the scene. God. I kiss your brother, come on, mom, child. And this clock or whatever that. It's like in each phase of the song, there is one sound that dominates the entire layer. But like in a really brilliant way that it doesn't like ruin the song. Oh. Now, whatever these draws are, I might need to get me some of these. Just kind of pull them up high on the side. I'm digging this look. Ah. 
Now you hear the whistle? Man, and even down to the, the locations, these, like, I actually don't even know if it's real. Like, it looks real, but this could absolutely be VFX. This could be fake. Either way, regardless, the cold feel, the chain, the change that we see in her between scenes. See, and this is really clever. It's just, it's the, it's the nuances that make this stuff so good when it's done perfectly. We go from, now we have a little bit of a transition, a little bit of a journey, because we go through this dancing scene, but we went from this very cold industrial space, okay? Listen. <laughs> There's there's a harshness to her voice at this point. Dreams come true. Ooh. Now you feel how the softness of the voice increases while we cut to this shot of her being very soft now. Audible, visual. Huh? Huh? Oh, comes together. Ooh, I'm making every See, at the end, when she was talking about good and evil and greed and temptation and all this, part of me at the time, well, part of me, all of me at the time, thought that she was talking about whoever was the one who hurt her, right? Because we see the bruises on her, we see the damage that's been done. To me, my first thought within, like, cinematography is, okay, she's part B and there's a part A and we've got to figure out kind of how all this happened. So I just kind of fast forward you into the story and then it's their job to kind of tell some of that story as we go. Um, but now that I'm kind of watching this again, I want to go back to what I was going to say. I wish they had done, but I didn't think it would make sense. This last shot. We zoom in, we hold on her face for longer than you expect to. You hold long enough to make the viewer go, what's gonna happen? I gotta pay attention. I don't wanna miss anything. Perfect. Now, this right here, now that I feel like I understand a little bit more of what this is trying to present, I kind of wish that they had held this shot all the way through this text coming up on the screen where she is still in the shot. We are still looking at her, but then the quote comes up on top of her and we're forced to kind of deal with both at the same time. I can see why they didn't do that. I just thought it would have been kind of neat. That's all. I mean, that's such a nitpicky thing. Oh man, what a great video. Oh my God. I've talked about it before. One of my absolute favorite movies of all time is A Quiet Place. 
because it's one of the few movies that I have experienced where sound is the main character. It's not John Krasinski. It's not Emily Blunt. It's, it's an incredible movie, but sound is the main character. So much so that when you watch it, especially if you're in a movie theater, you are ultra aware of every sound you are making. That's brilliant. This right here is one of the few times that I can say in all of this journey together where sound has played that much of a crucial role in my enjoyment of that art. And all it is is just a little something here, huh? a little something here. Oh, are you hungry? Here's a little nibble. Oh, and I'm constantly just like, mm. just gobbling it up. And you just pulled me along the whole time. Damn it. Wow. Sulgi. I have one final question. To some of you, it might be obvious. I'm clueless, so please help. 28 reasons. What are the 28 reasons? Is this, is this something that we're supposed to know? Does it reference other things? What is it? Is it like she's 28 years old and every year is she's 28 years old. Oh my God, I'm a genius. Oh my God. Okay, there you go. That was my first thought, but I was like, well, maybe there's something else and I got to ask the question. Okay, cool. Wow, 28 reasons. That's perfect. That even reflects more of the internal conflict that I think we're seeing within this video. That is beautiful. You know what it else? You know what else that makes me wonder? This might be a little heavy. We see this first injury here. We see another injury here. We see the injury, I think, on her other hand or her wrist here. My first thought, of course, was somebody did this to her. We talked about this. But now I'm wondering if this is all just kind of symbolism for her doing it to herself. And then that would come down to... Now, yeah, we could be talking physically, like actually harming herself, maybe. But it could also be just a representation of, like we talked about earlier, how we beat ourselves up emotionally, internally, whatever. And this quote really does a grand slam into bringing this home, especially this last part. We simply try to resist from being captivated by evil. Damn. Wow. That is so great. That's so great. 